Everyone ready? Everyone take a deep breath. Okay. Reciprocal. What's the reciprocal of three? Loyal. Yes, you do. All right. Come on. One over three. Good. Okay. You remember, because um, I've been doing it today, last year, perpendicular slopes, right? If a couple of lines are perpendicular, if the slope of one is a half, guys, the slope of something perpendicular to it is the negative reciprocal, okay? So we've seen this before. You don't have to worry about negatives. We just got to know what reciprocal is. Okay, so if I got a function f of x, the reciprocal function is just 1 over f of x. Okay, whatever f of x is. If f of x is 3, then the reciprocal function is 1 third, 1 over 3. Okay, that's the word. Now, what do you think this little tiny insignificant little 1 is going to do? Yeah, lots. Okay? So, again, if I got a function, f of x is x squared minus 5, or y is x squared minus 5, whatever. It's an equation, it's a function, same thing. Okay? Reciprocal functions, just 1 over x squared minus 5. Makes quite a big difference as far as what the graph looks like. Okay. Exploring. Let's explore, shall we? Here's a function f of x. It's x plus 3. That's, okay, without even looking, that's the graph of y is x, that 45 degree line, looks like this to you guys, shifted over by 3 units, okay? In the negative direction, there it is, 1, 2, 3. That's a 45 degree angle, okay? That's the function. You can plot it if you want. That's what they did. Okay, with lots and lots and lots of points. Again, how do you plot? Is there anybody who says you're not allowed to do this by hand? You don't know what the graph looks like? Eh, my graphing calculator, the batteries died. Is there anybody who's ever going to say you're not allowed to do this? No, you can do this, guys. Feel free. You don't have to just load the shortcut way every time, okay? Anybody can graph a function. It just takes a little longer, okay? So normally you want what's going on around the origin. Those are your bread and butter points, okay? Minus 2 up to 0, up to positive 2, what's going on? Well, if you plot those in this function, here's what you get. And they did this, okay? And they got the line there, all right? So far, so good? So we're just going to take a little 1 and put it over top of that. Write the equation of the reciprocal function. 1 over x plus 3, okay? Now, how would I graph that? Well, to start with, in this exploration, we're just going to plot the points. Now, you can take the point negative 6, plug it in there, and go 1 over negative 6 plus 3, okay? That's 1 over negative 3, or negative 1 third, but why do all that work? I already know what this thing is. I'm just going to take 1 over it. So why don't I just take 1 over that point? Okay? Like I've already got half the work done. Does that make sense? Okay? Negative 1 third, negative 1 third. If you already have this point, the reciprocal function is just 1 over that point. So it's negative a half. Okay? So now, plotting this, well, let's do a few more. Okay, negative 4, I don't need to plug that back in here and take 1 over it. I've already got the function, negative 1, just take 1 over negative 1, and it doesn't change. Okay, now 0. I'm going to take the reciprocal of 0. What's 1 over 0? Okay, you can't do it. That's a critical point. 
Okay, keep working down. Take one over one, I get one. One over two, a half. One over three, one third, one quarter, one fifth, one sixth, okay? And then over here, I'm gonna plot the reciprocal function. One over this thing, okay? Here's all your points. So I'm gonna plot this is x and that is y, okay? So if x is negative six, this guy is negative a third. There he is. If x is negative five, this is negative a half. Okay, negative four, negative one. Okay, does that look like about negative one? Yes, okay, right about there. Okay, negative three. How do you plot this point? You don't, right? It's undefined. The point doesn't exist. Negative two and one. Negative two and one. There's that point right there. Negative one and a half. There he is. Zero and three. Sorry, zero and a third. Okay, a third's a little less than a half, so that looks okay, right? They've already done this for us. One and a quarter. A quarter is less than a third, which is less than a half, right? One fifth, that's even smaller. One sixth, that's even smaller. And if that's the only points you have, you kind of just complete them. And then you got to figure out, well, what's going on here? Do we ever have this point? No. What is this thing called? It's called an asymptote, right? Okay. No point will ever touch this spot. I can't plot it. It's undefined. Okay? So this little one, yeah, it does some strange stuff here. That's the first exploration. Let's see what's going on with some of these points. Complete the following using these graphs. The y-intercept of the original function, okay, where does it cross the y-axis? Right here, right? That's 3. The y-intercept of this guy, where does this cross the y-axis? Where is x equal to 0? Okay, right here. Okay, that's 1 third. Does that kind of make sense? What's 1 over 3, right? If I know the original function, the reciprocal, just take 1 over it. Any point on this graph, if you just take 1 over it, that's how we got these, okay? That's what this whole data table means. X-intercept of the original graph f of x, here it is. That was negative 3. Okay, the equation of the vertical asymptote, I wrote it. What's the equation of that dotted line? Negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. Okay. We're just kind of exploring. State the coordinates of the two points which appear on both the graph of y is f of x, and the inverse y is 1 over f of x. These are called invariant points. Okay, let's have a clearer look at what's going on again. Which points are the same for f of x and 1 over f of x? These two. Is there any more? These guys, yeah. Those are called invariant points. They don't vary when you take the reciprocal of it. Why is that? Well, what's 1 over 1? Yeah, okay. What's 1 over negative 1? Okay, when I take the reciprocal of those, it's the same thing. They don't change. That's, okay, they're invariant. Some word they came up with, okay? They're the same, okay? Appear on both, same, invariant. All right. Horizontal asymptote of the inverse function. There's more than one here. You see the x-axis? Does a point ever touch the x-axis? 
This guy is also an asymptote, right? Okay. This will get farther, the farther we go, the closer and closer it gets, but it never touches it. Same thing this way. The farther we go out in the negative direction, it gets closer and closer and closer, but never touches it. Okay? Because even the smallest fraction is still a fraction. It's not zero. So horizontal asymptote is y is zero of the inverse function. Now this is important part. This is my original function. Where that thing was zero, what happened here? I had a vertical asymptote. Okay? So when the original function is zero, when I take the inverse of it, well, what's one over zero? Has a vertical asymptote. It's undefined, can't do it. We'll say that again and emphasize it later. When this original function approaches plus or minus infinity, either positive or negative infinity, this graph approaches closer to the, let's have a look. So they're saying when this thing approaches infinity, like this is only eight, where is it gonna approach infinity? Like way the heck over there, okay? When that thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what does this become? Let me reword that. Let's say this is really, really, really huge, okay? This point right here, that's a y value of 1,000, okay? Well, when I do the reciprocal of that, what is 1 over 1,000? It's a really, really small number, isn't it? Okay? As this thing gets bigger and bigger, what's 1 over a million? A million. Let's go 1 billion, okay? This thing's going to be huge. What's 1 over a billion? A billion. Okay, I don't fair, care how far you get, you're always going to get some little fraction. Okay, it's never going to be zero. So as this original function gets big and big, the reciprocal function gets smaller and smaller. That's what this is saying. Okay? Closer and closer to the horizontal asymptote. At in this point, it's x equals 0. Okay, does that make sense? That's what we're going to use to solve some of these. Same thing this way. As this gets bigger and bigger and bigger in the negative direction, and we take 1 over it, it's going to be smaller and smaller and smaller for the reciprocal. Okay? If this thing goes to minus 1,000 and I take 1 over it, what's 1 over minus 1,000? A really, really small number, negative. Okay? That's where this guy is over here. Okay? Important point. Let's look at another one. Yippee. Still exploring, okay? We're not really doing this, we're just seeing what happens. We're pulling out our graphing calculator and trying to figure out what happens. Here's the original function, x squared minus 4. All right, that's here. That's the graph of y equals x squared shifted down by 1, 2, 3, 4 units, right? Okay. And also on this is also the graph of 1 over that function, the reciprocal. Okay, I could plot this with points. What's 1 over 12? 1 12. Okay, if x is negative 4, I get 1 12. There's the point. I could do that again, all right? It's there for you. Feel free to look. But let's try to piece this thing together. Here's where you want to start. Where the original function is 0, can you do 1 over 0? No, you can't. Okay, so where this function is 0, that's where you have an asymptote. Okay, there, 
Here the function is zero. That's where you have a vertical asymptote. Can't do one over zero. There they both are. Next place you want to kind of look is right here. The y-intercept. That's the original graph. I want to take the reciprocal of it. This point's negative 4. What's 1 over negative 4? Negative 1 quarter. It's right about there somewhere. Okay? Now this one doesn't have the invariant points on there. We're going to fill that in a sec. But if that's all you have, you can make the reciprocal graph just by thinking of what I just wrote right here. Okay? As this thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what's one over a bigger and bigger number? A smaller and a smaller number. And you would get that point right there. Okay? This thing's symmetrical, but let's look at the other side. As this gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what's one over a really big number? This gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay? Now what happens as this approaches, this is my original graph here, this parabola. As this approaches zero, okay, from the negative side, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller. Well, what's that? Okay, what's this? As this gets smaller and smaller, if I take one over it, that gets bigger and bigger and bigger, right? So looking here, this is for y, values of y. As this gets smaller and smaller and smaller, then if I take one over it, that gets bigger and bigger and bigger. That's how that guy looks. Okay? Same thing on this side. If this gets smaller and smaller and smaller, it's getting really, really, really close to y equals zero, right? If I take one over that, I get really, really, really big numbers. Okay? Look at this point right here. That 12, I get one over 12. Okay? They don't really plot these points here, do they? Okay? I don't have a point of 2.1 here. But you've got to know which way this thing goes. Okay? Where did they get these arrowheads from? Well, they took these values and went one over them. This is the easy one, but what goes on over here? Okay? This thing is getting really, really close to zero, too but from the negative direction. So all you do is think, well, if these are negative, the closer I get to zero, the bigger this thing's going to get in the negative direction. Okay? That make sense? Kind of confusing? Well, th this one's already done for us, because it's kind of hard, right? Okay, same thing here. Or you can think, hey, this is symmetrical. If you know what happened on this side, you know what's happening on that side. There's two points here that are the same. What did we call those? Invariant points. Remember this? Okay. This point here, where that was 1, was also here. Okay, because 1 over 1 is 1. Well, when is this function 1? Okay. When is x squared minus 4 equal to 1? When is x squared equal to 5? When is x plus or minus the square root of 5? What is that value? 2 point something? When this thing is about the original graph, 2 point something, that's where we have a point that's the same in both graphs. Okay? Plus or minus. There's my invariant points. Okay? That's where these guys are the same. Plus or minus 1. Okay? I know there's a lot going on. I warned you, right? Um, 
Let's actually go to the steps. Suggestions for sketching the graph of a reciprocal function. Step one. Here's where you want to start. The zeros of the original function become asymptotes of the reciprocal. Okay? Don't worry, we'll do another example. I'll show you. Here they like to do this second. Invariant points. Okay. You don't have to. You could do something else next, but you probably want to look at those points. Y-intercept, if you have one, mark it on the reciprocal. Take one over it. Make that point. Okay? Same thing with these. But what doesn't it say here? It doesn't say this. Where this thing approaches zero, What's 1 over 0? You can't do it. But if it gets really, really, really close to 0, okay, like that, either from the positive direction or the negative direction, and you take 1 over that, what's 1 over a really, really small number? A really, really big number. Okay? When this thing approaches 0, this guy approaches infinity. Okay? The smaller this thing gets the bigger this thing becomes. That's what this says. That's how you're going to have to graph these things, guys. Okay? And the graph of this approaches a, I get all confused here, vertical asymptote. Okay? Conversely, when this original graph gets close to infinity, when the number is really, really big, well, what's 1 over a really, really big number? A really, really small number. Okay, when this thing approaches infinity, this thing approaches 0. So you just do the opposite. If the line gets close to 0, 1 over it, it's infinity. If the line gets close to infinity, what's 1 over that? You go down to 0. Okay? Everybody lost? Yeah. Okay, let's look at an example. I'll refer back to there. Okay. This one we got to make it ourselves. Okay? So that's good. It's not as cluttered. There's a graph y is f of x. Looks like a parabola. It's probably a square in there somewhere. Is the equation even given? No. I'm sure we could come up with it, but we don't need to. We just want to graph this thing. Okay? Use the suggestions on the previous page. We want to sketch this on the same graph. What's step one? Who remembers it? Let's have a look. Zeros of the original function become vertical asymptotes of the reciprocal. That's where you want to start. Where's this function equal to zero? Right here. Okay? Because I can't take one over zero, there's an asymptote. Okay, step two, mark the invariant points where y is 1 and y is minus 1. They actually have lines here for us. Where this thing's equal to 1 or negative 1, which isn't the case, that's where my reciprocal function is also going to go through those points because 1 over 1 is also equal to 1. Okay. Step three, y-intercept. Do I have one? The reciprocal is the reciprocal of the y-intercept. Well, I know that. Every point on here, the reciprocal is one over that point. Okay? There's the y-intercept. What does that look like? It's not a nice whole number. Tanner, stop talking. It's pretty close to what? Three? Okay? So what's one over three? One third? but it's not quite three, so it's a little bit under one-third, whatever. There it is, okay? Quarter, a third, good enough. I got three points to graph my reciprocal. What else do they got? All the points on the original graph become points one over it. Well, we know that. I could do an X and a Y table and complete this whole thing, but 
All you need to know is that. Okay? So let's do that. Let's start over in the right. When this thing gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what's one over a really big number? A smaller and smaller number. Okay? That's what this thing looks like. I know it has to go through that point. Are you okay with that? If this thing gets up to 100, what's 1 over 100? 100. That's pretty small. Okay? When it gets out to that point, 1 over that is really small. That's what you do. Okay? If this line goes up on the function, this one goes down on the reciprocal. All right? This function, as it gets really, really close to zero, what's one over a really small number? Like one-tenth. Ten. Right? There's one-tenth for the original function. One over that is ten. That's way up here. That's what that side looks like. Okay? If you got to take each one of these points and go one over it, Fine. What's that? About a half on the original function. What's 1 over a half? It's 2. There it is. Okay? But you don't have to take each point and do that. If you just remember this. Okay? Infinity, zero stuff. I'm almost done. Is this thing symmetrical? Yeah, it is. Let's do the same thinking on the other side. If this original function gets bigger and bigger and bigger, what's 1 over a really, really big number? A really, really small number. Okay? I know it has to go through this point. I know it has to go through that point. So what's going on here to finish my graph? I know it's going to be symmetrical. It's going to look like that. But let's say it again. 1 over a really, really, really small number. Let's go 1 one hundredth. There it is right there. Okay? What's 1 over 1 one hundredth? It's 100. It's really, really, really big. It's up there. Okay? I've graphed the reciprocal function. Everybody got one of these? Actually, you can't even put that in, can you? But I could put in something close. I'm just going to go 1 over x squared. It's going to look like that, only shift it over a bit. Does that look like the same? Yeah. Yep, you bet. Okay. What's that little one going to do? Right? Not much. Yeah, it's going to do quite a bit. Okay, so there's your little flow chart. That's what you do, but this has to be in here somewhere, okay? You got to do the thinking. Okay, one more. There's a graph of some function. Looks like a parabola. Okay, I got to do the reciprocal function. Sketch the graph of 1 over this guy. Where do we want to start? In your flow chart, it says find the zeros, let's do red this time, of this function, okay? Because what's 1 over 0? Can't do it. What happens here? You have asymptotes, okay? There and there. Step one. Step two. Is there a nice point you could just take one over to see what's going on? Like, I don't know, this point? Sure. Meryl? So that's almost two. What's one over almost two? Almost a half. Okay. It's got to go through that point. 
This here looks like exactly two. What's over one over exactly two? Exactly a half. It's got to go through that point. Okay. Invariant points where this guy is equal to one, like there, and here, I know it has to go through those points. Let's remove those points because we don't want to do our graph through those, okay? And where do you want to start? It's going to be symmetric. You want to do the left, you want to do the right, doesn't matter. As this thing gets to negative infinity, what's 1 over, like, I don't know, let's just go negative 1,000. I'm going to take the reciprocal of this point way down here, and it's going to be a really, really small number negative, right? So this guy is going to look like this. I forgot my other invariant points. It's got to go through there, got to go through there. So it's got to look like that. Okay? We're here. Where this thing gets to be negative 1, what's 1 over negative 1? It's also negative 1. Invariant points. Okay? Mark the invariant points where y is 1 and y is minus 1. Because when I take the reciprocal of those, I get the same thing. Okay? All right. Right here, it doesn't touch this dashed line. That's an asymptote. But where do I put my graph in here? As this graph gets really, really close to zero, negative, like one-tenth, okay? What's one over that? Okay? Tenth, negative. So this thing gets really big negative. It looks like that. Same thing happens on the other side. Okay. Everybody having fun yet? Okay, that's what's going on left of the asymptote. That's what's going on right of the asymptote. What's going on in the middle? I've got these points here. Okay, how am I going to find out what to do? I could take one over every one of these points, but remember this, as this gets close to zero, what's one over a small number? A really big number. Okay, this guy looks like this. He goes up there, he comes through that point, comes through this point, comes through that point, and goes up there. And looks like that. What is approximately what this graph looks like? x minus x squared plus 2? It would be if it was right there. It's shifted over a little bit. Okay. Whoop, bracket. Minus x squared plus to, that's pretty close to what that thing looks like, right? The only problem is this guy kind of loses this picture right here and right here, okay? There's the left, okay? Here's the right, so and in the middle, it goes, makes a little U, okay? Looks like this disappears here. This calculator is old technology. Does it show you? Yeah, this graph, again, it's shifted to the left a little bit, right? But it's approximately minus x squared plus 2. I could find out exactly, okay? Let's not worry about that. I know this is tough to digest. Okay?
So guys, a couple questions like six and seven say use a graphing calculator. Just don't plot it the way I'm telling you, okay? Because most of the time you graph and calculator, it's kind of hard to see what's going on anyway, okay? So just use your full chart. Hey, Mr. Watson. Yep. Do you think the, like, out of all the, the Texas Instruments models,